playing in the rafters when he's all done in Good OKC. Down. Good work. All right, Russ is speaking uh, with Mike in the media. Hey, Russ, what did you what did you guys feel switch some in that fourth quarter, uh, coming in down 12 when, when you went in the run early and then sustained it? Um, just stuck with it. You know, um, we got down and but third quarter didn't finish the way we wanted to, but fourth quarter and guys came in, stepped up, made right plays, stuck to our principles, defended uh, well, got some stops, and you know, scored in the paint. You were really getting to and finishing at the rim pretty much throughout the whole night. Russ, was there something that you noticed in the way that they were playing? Um, no, just slowing down a little bit. You know, last first three games rushing around the basket, which I don't really need to. Um, get there, taking my time, and then focus on making a layup. I asked Malik this question, but just sensing kind of your first time in a Lakers jersey, but with the fans on the road, at, uh, what do you think was the key for the Lakers to approach the game? Um, I think we we stuck together. I think one thing that Coach Ben never saw to us is togetherness. And I thought when they made a run, you know, we stuck together. Uh, we locked in on our defensive principles, got stops, and we made a run of our own, um, and then we made it a ball game. I mean, you definitely got to do that for sure. Um, you know, especially with Brian being out, um, we understand that uh, with that comes responsibility of making guys around us better. Uh, and tonight, I thought AD did a great job with just being aggressive all night, missing makes, um, finished well around the basket. Um, it was big for us tonight. What did you see from uh, Malik and Austin? Um, defending. I thought they defended very well. Um, probably kind of go, go unnoticed, but I thought they did a great job of defending, um, making shots when their number was called and, um, you know, being ready to go. Uh, Russ, there was that stretch where you were at the scores table and you couldn't check in because there was no breaks in the action. Was that, <laughs> was that hard to watch? Watch, you know, uh, but, you know, Malik makes some big shots, um, <laughs> closed the game the way we needed to, got in overtime, and then I just wanted to make sure I didn't lose focus. So when overtime did come, I was locked in until we can close the game. Uh, definitely, man. You know, it's always tough to see, you know, one of your best players go down, uh, especially in times like that when he's battling so much. Um, you know, you know. Luckily, and and we'll stay prayerful for, for him and make sure that he is all right moving forward. Um, you know, he's able to finish the game tonight, but. It's always a tough one to see, you know, one of your guys go down. How are you feeling about going back to Oklahoma tomorrow? I know you've done it several times. Yeah, I feel great. You know, it's like home for me, um, just because I was there for so many years. All the people there have been so great to me um, since day one. And like family, so just like going home, um, you know, so. But I also want to win. <laughs> Russell, what's been the, for you with back-to-backs throughout your career? Like, what's the key what, from a team standpoint, from an individual standpoint? Um, start preparing tonight. You know, you got to prepare one thing I learned a long time ago. Um, as a young player in this league, the hardest thing to do is be consistent in this league and then be able to do the same thing every night. So I pride myself on being able to turn the page and do the same thing again the next night. So just making sure we focus. And my job is to make sure all our guys are focused and, and you know, get, get this game behind us and get ready for tomorrow. You've had some battles here in San Antonio. Yeah. Uh, but when you look across that, that bench, it's completely different. Um, what, what do you see from, from the... Oh, man, these guys are young, fast, athletic, playing well, play together. Um, you know, I still see Pop, I tell you that. Pop's there right there. <laughs> so they're still well coached and they know how to play the game and be tough, you know, they're going to be you poked with the loop. So it was just a great uh, uh, overall game for everybody. I think they needed this win, but the only thing that's kind of sticks out in my mind is that AD played 42 minutes and then they got a game tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So it's a little too early for that. Also had that bang knee there on that free throw. I'm sure we'll show, show that later. I'm, I'm glad you mentioned uh, uh, the other guys because there's that lineup of Reeves, Monk, Dwight, Russ, and AD that started that fourth quarter and played about seven, eight minutes together. That was tremendous on both ends of the floor and got the Lakers back in that game. All right, Brez, where would where, you want to start? Yeah, I mean, this is what Rob Palenka envisioned when he made the trade back in July to acquire Russell Westbrook. Yeah, he gave up three core players, but he wanted that third superstar for nights like tonight. When LeBron James can't go, you have another superstar to team with Anthony. Lakers really turned it around there in that fourth quarter because that 
it looked bleak uh, in terms of everything. Defensively, getting out rebounded, the fast break points, but the Lakers' fourth quarter uh, really changed the momentum of that game. We got to start with the big two uh, because there was no LeBron tonight. Russ and AD, they combined for 68 points, 27 rebounds, 12 assists, four blocks, and three steals, James. And it's something we talked a lot about in the pregame show. We led with it. No LeBron, now you get to see the chemistry with Russ and AD. You also get to see the ball in Russ's hand where he's most comfortable. Yeah, I, I think Brad's hit on it. You know, Rob wanted someone that could take over if LeBron wasn't available. And I think Westbrook did a good job of him tonight. And, you know, he had a good pace. Uh, Westbrook's kind of in attack mode all the time. And if you give him an opportunity, he's going to try to get through the rack. I thought he had some unselfish passes early in the game where he got guys shots. He got monk shots, a, little, a couple of lobs over the top. Uh, he was just aggressive. And I think he set the tone uh, for the team. They were able to get back to that on the defensive end. Uh, just, just a special game by him tonight in the absence of LeBron. Uh, I mean, listen, Rob, yeah, he had one three at a couple of pull-ups. But most of those points were attacking, grown man style. In the rack for for yeah, Speaking of grown man style, that's one when he went. I just know he's gonna get a block and he dunks on him. So that's Russ. That's Vince's rush right there, going to the hole, dunking on people, getting to the hole, attacking, drawing the defense and kicking it out. When Russ is in the attack mode, it's a lot easier for him to play the game. But when he's in there with LeBron, he kind of defers to LeBron. But he sometimes needs to say, hey, LeBron, I got the advantage. I got a guy who can't keep up with me. Go for it. So you love it when he's in attack mode because everybody else around him eats. He finds people. He feeds people. And people get easy buckets because the defense collapses. It's such a big game for so many uh, reasons. A, the Lakers 500, nice first road win. And B, it might open the eyes of the Laker coaching staff a little bit. Like, oh, so we can, we can do this with him if LeBron's off the court. You know, obviously LeBron, a very ball-dominant player. Uh, so is Russ. So the first three games, it was kind of a push and pull uh, with those two guys. Tonight, though, with the Laker coaching staff probably realizing this kid can do a lot, as if they didn't know that already. But now he's starting to match up well with his teammates. He and AD were perfect together. By the way, AD, two follow-up uh, uh, rebounds in, in that uh, overtime that led oh, to shit. baskets. He was really strong off the offensive glass. Yeah, let's switch gears and talk about the other star now because he deserves it. I mean, w w without AD, there is no win. Yeah. I mean, this was a dominant performance, 35 points, 17 boards, Four blocks again for the second consecutive game. But there was a spurt there in the fourth quarter where it just looked like he was not going to let this team lose. Oh, yeah. You know, AD was being AD. He was attacking the basket. You know, I'm always harping on getting extra buckets, getting extra shots. And AD tonight was active. He was around the rim, getting the ball, getting his hands on loose ball, putting it back. The advantage the whole night. Yeah. Seven offensive rebounds. <laughs> 72 points in the paints for the Lakers tonight. A lot of that had to do with his willingness to go get that basketball. He knew at some point uh, in, the, in that overtime in the fourth quarter that extra possessions were going to be critical, and he knew he had the ability to go get them. So there was some nice putbacks, some a nice tack to the basket on his part, and that's what you want to see out of him. Before you go, Brez, first time this year, James, the Lakers win the paint battle. There we go. Like that, 72 to 64. Yeah, it's funny.